Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, creatures, critters, and whatever you else you want to call yourself of all ages and persuasions, welcome back to the Civilian Armory. This is the fourth portion of our journey to the assembly of this rifle. Um, if you've been following along with us, you know that this is a Palmetto State Armory, uh, what they call an EPT kit. Um, it bears their 15-inch lightweight uh, handguard, so on and so forth. But where we're at in the series, we are still assembling the lower. Last time, we assembled our fire selector and our pistol grip. <coughs> In this video, we're going to install the complete buffer tube assembly and its associated parts and our takedown pins because those things are kind of related. So, because those things are kind of related, we're going to start with takedown pins and associated take down pin parts now you can see that and this is common with many companies many companies are doing this now um, Palmetto State Armory and all of their infinite wisdom has given us not one not two but three take down pin springs and that is because while the rifle requires two, and I say rifle because it's just a general term, um, really anything with a 16 inch barrel is really a carbine and not a rifle historically, but um, carbines are a type of rifle. So um, the rifle takes two, they give us three, and that is because generally um, during the assembly of one, you'll generally shoot at least one of these guys across the room and they're not very big right so they're hard to find so a lot of companies give you three palmetto state armory was wise enough and generous enough to give us three as well so what do you need for today for this what we're going to do here you need your buffer tube or receiver extension tube, whichever you prefer to call it. You need your buffer spring, your buffer, you need your castle nut, you need your receiver end plate, you need your buffer detent and buffer detent spring, you need both of your takedown pins, you need two takedown pin springs and two takedown pin detents. Additionally, to make it handy, I would recommend a pair of needle nose as well as the same grease we used last time for our safety selector detent. Let's get into it. I would say that we'd start with the hard one, but arguably neither of them are terribly easy unless you have some practice. I'm going to use a flashlight here to show you that hole. That hole is where our spring and our detent go in. Okay, so we're going to start this process off. Grease things up while we still have free hands. The way I do it, I apply some grease, and it's not, you don't have to do this, but I like to have a little grease in the slot on both my takedown pins. I've never had one freeze up, but some of them can be pretty tight, so... Having a little grease in there doesn't hurt my feelings uh, really at all. So, back to where our hole is here. Right here, that hole. We're going to take one of our takedown pin springs, stick him down in the hole. It will go all of the way in. These two springs are the same, doesn't matter which one you use. Then we're going to take our takedown down pin detent 
and it'll it's not enough to let it kind of sit all the way in there sometimes so of your two takedown pins the bigger one with the bigger head it's also longer that is your forward takedown pin so to prep we're going to take a pair of needle nose and grab our takedown pin detent in one hand take our takedown pin in the other I'm trying to get this to where I can do it on the camera here guys and it's not terribly easy to get it on camera so we're gonna start him in there sometimes a flathead screwdriver can be pretty handy um, in this instance I'm gonna use a ruler I know that wasn't on the gear list sorry about that so I'm gonna use a ruler to push that detent back in that hole I'm trying to get my pin started and it started for me and I'm sure there was a lot of jiggling around and I was probably not easy to see but do you see how that deep tint goes back into that hole like that and rides in the groove on our pin? So that's where that detent rides. He rides in that groove, right? And it hits a little notch and it detents on either on either end of the pin. Right? And these get pretty pretty hard to move back and forth sometimes. Um, I like to use the end of a screwdriver and just whack the non-head end of the pin and then you can pull it back out like that. So that's our front detent pin installed. Now, things start getting special on this end and generally this is the one that gets flung across the room. So to start, we're going to take our receiver extension tube, we're going to take our castle nut, castle side towards the back, okay, and we're going to thread our castle nut on there. I thread it on quite a ways. We're going to take our end plate, and we need the divot part towards the receiver okay so that that's towards the back of the receiver we're going to take this assembly and start screwing it in sometimes those threads feel awesome and sometimes they don't these threads feel pretty tight which is not necessarily a good or a bad thing so as we come around Grab a little light here again. As we come around, you'll notice there is kind of a little stepped portion on your receiver extension tube. That little stepped portion, which you can just barely see there, captures your buffer, detent, and spring. Okay, so I'm going to hold fast on that. Take our knife here. Open our little package up. Huh. Tip of my, my my knife must be getting dull. There we go. Open our little package up here and pull out our buffer detent and buffer detent spring. They ride together. The buffer detent spring goes up in the buffer detent like that, and the little pointy side sticks up. Okay, so holding them together, we're going to tilt this back to where we can see that hole again and kick them down in that hole and push them down. Nope. Need another rotation. And screw that into where it's just enough to hold that buffer detent see it'll capture it so that it won't fly out okay 
Now, we are ready. We're gonna rotate this. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get all this in, in the shot. And there we go. Pull our, pull our receiver in plate back a little bit. Rotate it around to where it is just out of the way, exposing that hole. Okay, that little hole there is where our next takedown pin detent and spring are going to go in. Okay, so give me a second to stand up here and find another detent and spring that are trying to roll away from me. Okay. So we've already got the grease in the channel on our rear takedown pin. You need that channel on your takedown pin facing the rear. And I go ahead and drop him all the way in like that. Now we're gonna take this little detent and stick him in the hole right there. Come behind it with our takedown pin detent spring and you notice maybe you notice that the spring doesn't go all the way in okay this is where people shoot these across the room and it's gonna be difficult for me to do on camera because I'm you know working around the camera but I'm gonna do everything I can I want you guys to think I'm some layabout who doesn't know how to do stuff. I like to use the end of a knife. I use the end of the knife and I push that in and I bring my receiver uh, extension tube back and I start pushing and tightening my screw pushes my plate towards the receiver. Okay? So I've got that captured there. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me get my light back out. You can see that little spring is being held by that receiver end plate. Okay, I managed to do that without shooting it across the room, but if you shoot yours across the room, don't feel bad about it. Okay, so all things being how they are, we just continue to tighten our castle nut up until our plate sits all the way flush, like that one. You'll see people screw this up and half their spring is like sticking out of the side here. Okay? If you've got that going on, you you messed up. Alright, there's just not another way to put it. And these takedown pins are tight, so I'm gonna take the soft end of a screwdriver, give that a little tap to push that pin back for me so that I can get a nail under it and pull it back out to me. Okay? So it detents at both ends, everything's working good. As you work your detent pins, your, for, your forward one and your rear takedown pin, as you work them back and forth, they'll get to where they're not quite so tight. Um, I've actually seen a couple of rifles, a couple of factory built rifles even, it was a Wyndham Weaponry, um, that the takedown pins were so tight that you literally had to hit them with a punch. Um, that was a factory built rifle I was looking at it in the store wanted to look at the internals they were going to let me look at the internals and yeah we ended up having to take a punch to it even the guy behind the gun counter was surprised but either how guys that's how you install your forward and rear takedown pins with their associated detents and springs as well as your receiver extension tube your castle nut your receiver in plate and your buffer tube, I'm sorry, your buffer retainer and buffer retainer spring. You do need to torque this nut. I'll show you how to do that in another video. I prefer to keep it hand tight for now. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.